Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Danny Delaney with ANCA, the Adirondack North Country Association and the Center for Businesses in Transition. Um, so we are so happy that you're able to join us uh, here today and we'll have recordings of this session available um, afterwards as well online. So you can share it with anybody that you might um, want to, um, that you, I'm sure you all know lots of small businesses in your area who could use this kind of information right now. Um, so thank, a big thank you to Clarkson for help to, helping to support this series of webinars in this program, um, and also for Nicole who, from Breaking Even Communications who will be doing the presenting. Um, if you just joined in without getting the handout ahead of time, maybe you didn't um, register with the ANCO website, that's totally fine, uh, but just in the chat box, just add in your email address and I will send along um, the handout for you to follow along with. You don't need it, but it could be helpful for you. Um, so that's that, and I will hand it over to Nicole. All right, thanks, Danny. Hey, everyone, let me just share my computer screen. So I think, hold on, there we go. I think I'm sharing it. Um, if somebody could feel free to thumbs up if you can see it. Um, so basically, um, you know, people ask me about PowerPoint slides and whatever. I'm the kind of person who I hope I'm engaging enough, but like this, this theoretical handout that you will get or may already have kind of goes over some of the things that I'm going to talk about today so that you can reference them more easily. I just want to set the expectation that um, if I can't set up a whole online shopping cart in an hour, <laughs> I've been doing this 11 years and um, I just want to set the expectation that what I want to help you do is ask the right questions and, and approach it how um, an internet person like myself would approach it. Um, so that when you make the decision, you can feel pretty confident about it. Um, I equate this kind of process to probably moving into your first house. So obviously you thought about your first house and you picked it out thoughtfully, but there's probably a couple things about it you didn't like. And you over time decided to renovate it, or if you hated enough things about it, you moved to a different house. And so what I want to say is that this is not some permanent decision you're going to make, and that a lot of these all the software basically runs on databases and databases can be exported and imported. Um, I'm not saying it always goes smoothly, but I'm saying that if you kind of input all your products into one system and want to move it to another, um, usually that's a matter of kind of downloading and, you know, and uploading correctly into a different system. So don't think you have to like redo all that work again. The thing that takes the most time is thinking through how you would want this to work. Um, and how you need this to work. So there are certain things that we all want to have, um, and then there's certain things we need to have. And so what we want to do as we're kind of shopping for theoretical software is to think about the things we really need or really, really, really want, and then have kind of the secondary things where, oh, it'd be nice if we had this. So um, let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be kind of pulling up examples um, to kind of show you sort of different approaches to things. And um, you know, if you have questions, just type them in the chat. We'll also have some, uh, probably a little bit of time at the end as well. Um, and I believe um, through this, there's I have some office hours where you can uh, book a little consult, and I can look at your particular situation, um, you know, and uh, and try to try to help as best I can. Um, so yeah, let's let's get started. So basically, you know, in terms of online payments, I don't know if some of you attended yesterday's webinar, but the summary, if I could summarize that in two sentences, is that you should take money online and there's a few different ways to do it. Um, one of them being something very simple, like a payment form. So basically it's just a form that takes a payment, just one pager, there's your product, couple of pro, you know, whatever your product is, or, and then you have the little credit card field or, or however you wanna take the payments. And what I recommend something like that for is if you just have a few products. So I have one client who makes pasta sauce. He has three types. Obviously he doesn't need a whole online shopping cart to have three products. Um, he can just have, you know, pick your pasta sauce type and then pick how much you want and it will um, show the pricing and allow you to pay uh, through that system. Um, you can also deal with this through a shoppable landing page. Um, so a lot of email marketing softwares and different softwares, but mainly email marketing that I've seen offer these shoppable landing page kind of things, which give you basically a really simple website and people click on buy and they can buy your one kind of one product at a time. So it's not like a traditional online shopping cart where I can put multiple things in or I can take them out or 
save them to my wish list or whatever. Um, but in terms of if you have a gift certificate or you have like so kind of like a very simple product line, that can work well. So just wanted to kind of put that out there that you don't necessarily have to set up a whole cart. You could just set up something like that. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about um, basically um, not reinventing the wheel. Now, if you have been doing this for like 20 years and you have really specific ideas of how you want it to work, that's where you get like a developer to kind of build it for you. Now, I'm just going to say too that um, if you do work with a web developer or somebody like that, I want you to stay away. If they say that they have a custom content management system or they have something custom, and I'll just tell you my personal thoughts on that, which is if someone has something custom, it means you're stuck with working with them indefinitely. Now, they can be great people. They can be the smartest person you've ever met. But I don't know about you, but every product, you know, we don't want one person who's been working on it. The more people that have been working on it, the better the product is going to be. So like, you know, so someone like I use um, open source content management systems like WordPress, which runs 30% of the world's websites. And I can name you 50 people who can work on your website that aren't me if I build it. Um, so if, so if a company is trying to pitch you their custom system, um, ask for something not ask for something more standard first of all so that you can take your ball and go home if you want to and second of all so that if you want to learn how to do something there's some documentation about it so like if you decide that you're going to use Shopify to build your cart and you decide that you want to add something there's probably a tutorial about it out there if you're using a custom system you're not going to find that tutorial so um, anyway all right dismounting from my soapbox so um, the kind of thing that you're going to need is going to depend what kind of products that you're selling. So I'm not endorsing, by the way, any of these. I have no, um, I have no uh, dog in this fight. I don't sell any of these myself. Um, there's nothing that I've made here. But just to tell you, kind of give you some examples of how different companies approach these problems. Now, Here's the other thing. Everybody needs to take their cut. They've paid someone to develop the software. They're paying someone to market the software. So like, you know, um, if you're using something for free, it's going to be kind of limited. So for example, if you're using like Big Cartel, which is an online shopping cart software, um, they have a free account that allows you to put in, I think up to 10 or 20 products, but your domain name is going to be yourwebsite.bigcartel.com. So there's a saying in my industry that is um, if you're, if something's free, then you're the product. So um, you're basically basically advertising their software kind of for free. Um, so you you are going to be probably paying something for this. I just want to mentally prepare you for that. Are you going to be paying millions of dollars? No. Is it going to even be hundreds? Probably not, depending on what you want. Um, but just kind of mentally prepare that. Like there's the free version and the paid version, and sometimes it's just worth it to get the paid version. Um, typically because you get a little bit more. Now, you know, um, shopping for software is a lot like buying a car because um, what you can get stuck with doing is if you're just looking at pickup trucks or something, you can find a $3,000 pickup truck and a $35,000 pickup truck and they're all pickups, but like you need to kind of look down at the features of what each one has. You know, this one has cruise control, this one has trailer hitch, whatever. So we're gonna do the same thing with software and we're not gonna be intimidated by that. This is what this webinar is about, is like having you feel really like, I made a good decision and if someone asks you about it, you can confidently answer why you picked it. So um, the first kind of thing that a lot of people tend to sell is like events or booking. So obviously those have certain constraints, right? Like you want someone to be able to book something at a certain time. So like maybe you have, I don't know, uh, cooking, you know, you have a cooking tour or food tour and it runs, you have one that runs at lunch and you have one that, one that runs like around happy hour. So you want people to be able to pick their day and time. You probably want, you know, them to book multiple people at the same time so that they don't have to keep filling it out for each individual person. Um, maybe if you're the kind of food tour that fills up, you want to have a kind of waiting list feature or something like that so that if someone cancels that you can invite the people who've been waitlisted. And if you're running like a bigger venue or a bigger event, you might want very specific things. Like maybe you want a scannable barcode on the ticket, or maybe you want people to be able to pick out their seat in their section of your theater, something like that. So um, here's a couple of event tool or event websites. And uh, like I said, I'm endorsing none of them, but I'm showing you how the pricing can work differently. 
So first of all, a really popular one is called Eventbrite, and you probably have seen that. A lot of people use it for free events um, because obviously it's free. If you start charging money for your events, this is a little tricky, and you had to read the fine print to get to this part. Um, they charge you 3% transaction fee. So at the time, let's say, you know, you're charging $25 for your workshop or something like that. Oh, and you see the money come in and you actually get $23. You're like, okay, that was the transaction fee. At the end of your event, they send you an invoice for the other 3%. So this happened to me. That's why I'm, I'm basically, you're going to learn from all of my mistakes today, folks. That's, uh, that's the idea. But they do make it easy. You know, you make a free Eventbrite account, you put in your event information, and it gives you a little snippet of code. You can put it right on your website to be able to take registrations. Um, so, you know, so the price, you're kind of paying for the price of ease, ease of use, right? Now, if you're doing, you know, so I have, uh, you know, a client who does, um, he does diving, tour, he does tours on his boat. And so he has, he does three boat tours a day with 80 people in the summer per, per boat tour. So um, obviously something like a percentage, like 6% would really cut into his bottom line a lot. And he's doing a lot of events. So something for him might be more of the second option, which charges you a monthly fee to use. Um, and so, you know, and you can have, and, and, you know, we can have unlimited events and things like that. So what you want to think about is you want to do your own math for whatever event that you're running and decide whether, you know, a percentage of what you sell is okay or whether a flat fee um, might be better for you based on kind of how many events you're doing or something like that. Um, and then some, you know, some software will just charge you a light, a fee to just use the software for a year. Um, so obviously as a web developer, um, I don't want to necessarily set up my clients with something that costs a hundred bucks a month because they're paying me to set it up. Right. So I can be like, Oh, I found you the solution. It's going to cost you $80 a year. And you're going to, instead of paying, you know, whatever, a hundred times 12, $1,200 a year to keep events smart online. If at the higher rate, you're going to pay me and I'm going to like set it up for you. And you're just going to keep paying this yearly software license of whatever we need. Um, so, and, you know, I just, yeah, I thought, you know what, there's probably also a software out there that takes a price per ticket and there definitely is. And I found one and there's multiple and they have a range, um, but they will charge you a minimum of $65 a month. So whether you sell a hundred, uh, tickets at with a 65 cent processing fee or not, they're going to charge you that no matter what. Um, so, you know, so just kind of think about obviously how your math works out this is going to help make this decision kind of for you if you're doing events. Um, obviously, so at Anchor Space now, I, am, I have a, a co-working space and we do monthly workshops and we charge for them. So what I do is I actually make a payment because I am, we do just a couple of events and I already have payment form software. I just make a payment form for each event that we do and just have it take the right amount of money. Um, and I can set that form to take a certain amount of submissions so, you know, okay, we have a place for 12 people in the workshop. When 12 people have submitted the, the payment form, uh, the workshop goes offline. Um, so, you know, can you jerry rig something that's less expensive than this? Absolutely. Um, but I just kind of want to tell you, if you're like professionally doing events, you probably need a little bit more features than I do, you know, running um, a co-working space that, you know, in a rural place that doesn't have a ton of members that are attending events. Um, so um, I hope that like kind of framing this stuff this way is, is a little bit helpful. Now, the other thing that you can consider selling, and I think a lot of people don't, um, at least that I know, is selling digital products. So, you know, um, and I, I use my pork recipe example here because I have a client, he's a farmer, he raises, he raises pork. And his thing is that, you know, people don't buy enough pork, you know, they'll buy bacon or whatever for breakfast, and they might buy a pork loin or something once in a while. But you know, he has kind of some interesting cuts and things like that. And what I try to tell him is that people just don't know how to use it. Like I have a teriyaki pork recipe and that's like my only pork recipe. Um, but if I had kind of more ways to use it, I would probably buy it more. Um, also I would buy his recipe book because I figured he might try out the recipes. So, um, what, so what you can do with digital products obviously is you need to, um, make something, um, nice. There's a link to the handout in the chat if that's helpful. Um, so what you want to do here is basically make a system because you don't want to like get the email and then send it out, um, you know, or whatever to everybody who wants it. 
but there are other digital products, obviously, besides eBooks, there's, you know, online courses, there's memberships. So just think about if there's, and what's great about digital products is people don't have to be right near your business to be able to buy from your business. So think about like what you do. And if there's a way that you can make it so that someone who lives somewhere else can access it. Um, and ta-da, you've got a digital product. Now, there's a few ways to handle this. Um, so one is that, you know, so in, in my case, for example, I made a free ebook to like build my email list. Um, and so if people fill out the sign up form, they get it automatically emailed to them. Now, I'm not exchanging any money. So um, I just have it set up with my email marketing software where a person fills out this form, they're automatically added to this list. And the email marketing software, when someone's added to that list, sends them that PDF link. So, um, so that's one way to handle it. But you're not here to talk about free stuff. We're here to talk about money. So uh, let's talk a little bit about some other options. So I looked at some, you know, there's definitely tons of like sort of membership type plugins. Um, so the Send Owl one that I put here, um, it, you know, lets you kind of do like membership. So it does, you know, automatic billing, you know, so if you have like something, for example, a co-working space that takes a monthly membership, you could set up something like that. Um, and it also works with some other types of software. So for example, it works with, um, affiliate marketing. If you've never heard of that, basically you probably have seen your friends do this. So, um, you decide to order a meal delivery kit. And so when you order the meal delivery kit, it comes with a thing that says, oh, if you refer a friend and use this coupon code, they get 10% off and you get 10% off. So I'm on Facebook saying, hey, I ordered this meal delivery kit. And if you use this code, you'll get 10% off and I'll get 10% off. So that's what's called affiliate marketing. So, um, so if that's important to you, obviously you want to pick a membership platform that works with affiliate marketing. Um, and by the way, I have a list of, of all these like, things you could want a little bit lower on the list. But, um, but like I said, what, what you want to do is compare apples to apples as much as you can with any software. The other thing too, I will just mention as a little sidebar is that most software will offer you a two week free trial. That's a typical thing in this industry. So if you're trying to decide between two things, um, make sure that obviously you, you're in the headspace to test it out and you can sign up kind of for your two options and play with them for a couple of weeks before you make the decision and actually put money down. So, um, so yeah, so just feel free to use kind of the tools I'm giving you today to kind of narrow it down. And if you're trying to decide between two, just try them out. Um, so, um, and then obviously like if you're selling courses, there's different concerns obviously with courses, right? You want students to be able to go through the different lessons. Maybe you want additional handouts, Maybe you want a way for students to be able to message with you or message with each other, some kind of like interactive element. Um, so there are whole websites that have thought through selling courses, you know, so you can, you know, and I just put a couple in there that, that I know of, but there's tons of them out there. Um, and, you know, many, if you are doing some kind of physical selling of products, like if you decide, and I'll get into this in a second, that you're going to use a Shopify or a Squarespace or a Wix or something like that, if you're using kind of an e-commerce system, a lot of them do support digital products as part of their interface. So if you have like some physical products and you want to just throw a couple digital products in there, there's typically a way to do that within um, these kind of larger, more well-known pieces of software. But um, but yeah, um, is it better to wait until things are totally perfect to get it out there? And eh, not necessarily. Let you know. Let's uh, strike while the iron's hot. Now, physical products, and this is probably the business that most of you are in, right? And we've all used online shopping carts before. Basically, you know, you can put multiple things in your cart. If you're looking at something, it'll say like, "Oh, people might also," you know, there'll be some related products. Um, you know, and you have all kinds of like little bells and whistles that you can add. So um, kind of like the bigger ones in the space obviously are, are listed here. And what you do is you basically use that software and it includes a free domain. I love this as a marketing tool, by the way. Domain names cost like $12. And if you're a reseller, they cost like $8. So yes, if you spend $200 with me, I can throw in an $8 thing. Like you get a free domain name. Okay, domain names, I'm just telling you, are not that expensive. So um, a lot of these will just throw in a free domain and they'll register it for you, fine. Um, but just know that, you know, 
it's nice, but it's not like they're not being super generous here. Um, and they will let you work with your domain to build the online shopping cart. Um, and you can basically pick it out based on the features you need. Now, a little bit later on in this, I have a fake business that I fake that I am thinking through, and I'm going to show you how I would evaluate um, which software that I would use in the situation. So all of these, whether it's Shopify, Squarespace, Wix, um, you know, they all, and I think, I'm not sure quite, Square is a little bit different, but they typically offer, um, it's a monthly fee typically um, for you to use it. And it's going to be somewhere probably between $10 and $30, depending on how many bells and whistles you need. Is there a big difference between you spending, you know, $200 a year on your website and $300 a year? Probably not. Um, but like, that's kind of the cost that you're typically looking at with, with using something like that. And it's pretty customizable. Um, they come with templates so that you can, you know, kind of start with some bare bones and you can customize them. You probably have seen uh, people do some pretty cool stuff with them actually. Um, but if you want something that you download and install on your own domain that you have complete control over, you can use something like, um, you know, if you're working with Drupal or, or uh, Joomla or WordPress or other open source content management systems, there are uh, product add-ons that you can, I just threw WooCommerce in as the example that works with WordPress, but there's tons of basically online shopping carts that you can get from the internet and put on your website. Um, now, of course, someone like me, again, like um, the one thing I don't like about things like Shopify, so Shopify is really cool. They're also based in Ottawa. Um, they seem like a really innovative company, but um, they kind of nickel and dime you a little bit. So for example, um, I wanted to add, um, so I have a client who has like a lot of products on their website, like hundreds, and they keep adding to them, but they want me to market them. Now, I'm not going to keep going to the website and being like, okay, there was 380 products yesterday. Now there's 450, which ones are new? So there's these things called RSS feeds, which basically would tell, would tell me which ones were new. Um, so I said, Hey, can we put an RSS feed on your product thing so that I know when you have new products? Okay. So that costs $4.99 a month. So you see where I'm going here, right? As a web developer, it's kind of annoying to me because what I want to do is I just want to build you what you want um, and not worry that like, and not come to you every time and be like, okay, can I spend like $6.99 a month on this? Or can I spend $2.99 a month on this? I just want to be able to build it. That's why someone like me is probably going to try to sell you something like, like a WooCommerce site because basically it's free to download. And then I just add on like yearly subscription fees for the very specific functionality that you need. For a typical cart, I typically budget about $300 in software licenses for a year. Um, but then once you have it, you have complete kind of control over it. So um, again, if you're a control freak, you might like something like that. But if you just want to start quickly, and honestly, I recommend most people, I hate building shopping carts. I'm just going to say it. They're they're, they're, once they're built, they're lovely. Um, but there's all these little like nitpicky things that you think about as you're building them. And what's something nice about, you know, a, a larger company that has already done this is that they will take you through all the steps so that you don't forget anything and they have really good documentation. So if you, like I said, if you want to know how to do something, they probably have a video of how to do it. And then they probably have written step-by-step -step directions on how to do it. And they probably, because you're paying them, they have online support. So if for some reason it doesn't work, you can tell somebody and they will get back to you. So what I recommend most people starting with is something like this. Um, you know, especially if you have more time than money right now, build your first cart. Honestly, the thing that takes the most time is like getting all your products photographed, writing, you know, product titles and descriptions for them, deciding like, oh, okay, if I'm going to try to sell someone like this mug, like what should I, you know, cross sell or upsell with it inputting all that content is what takes the most time. It's not less, it's not uh, setting up necessarily the processing and all that. So if you already are, if you're willing to get yourself organized like that, um, you're way ahead of the game. So, um, so like I said, those larger, and I, what I'll do is I'm going to, like I said, show you my fake business. I'm sorry. I have a basset hound. Um, apparently someone's at the door. Really helpful. Gotta love working from home. I don't know why the, I don't know why they ring the doorbell. I don't, we're, not, we're not coming to the door. So, um, oh my God, just hold on one second. So, um, Brandy, stop, please. Uh, anyway, so the other thing to potentially think of is your point of sale system. 
if you have an existing point of, oops, I reformatted the document. If you have an existing point of sales system, there might be a little, um, in your point of sale system, right? If you have a physical business that, you know, there's typically an online component that sometimes you can just turn on. And like I said, the part that takes the longest is inputting all your product information. If you've already done that in your POS and there's a little online component that you can turn on, just use that, you know? But I mean, obviously look into it. If you have a terrible POS, you might take the time to move it to something else. But, um, but just look at that as a, as a possibility. Um, because I think a lot of, especially now, a lot of these companies are trying to remain relevant in a time where people are not physically coming into businesses. So I've seen a lot of pe a lot of companies stepping up and saying, oh, we've added this like a way for you to sell online. You could just turn this on if you're using this piece of software because they don't want to lose you as a customer if you're already paying for a POS system. So look at what you've already, the, what they've already got. And if the online options of, of a website builder are better, then obviously go with that. Um, and then, you know, if I don't know how many people on this call are more of a services business, but I met, I brought this up yesterday, but, um, you know, thinking about things like, okay, you know, um, you know, one time versus recurring payments, things like building in taxes. Um, a lot of the payment form software will build in taxes for you. So like I have a client who she wrote a book. She has one thing to sell. It's one book. And so when she sells it in the state of Maine, she has to charge Maine sales tax. And when she doesn't sell it in the state of Maine, she doesn't. So in the form, if someone types in a main address, I have the sales tax field loading with the right amount of sales tax for the one book, because it's not like we're, you know. And then if someone does not put a state of main address in, it doesn't load it. So um, you can do stuff like that um, a little bit with forms. But the other thing you can kind of build in is if you do services and you're already invoicing people using some kind of cloud system, you can just turn on payment processing in QuickBooks or FreshBooks or whatever you're using. They probably, if you have a cloud-based thing, have some kind of online processing available to you. I will also say if those, as you're kind of doing, you know, if you're doing some contracts and things like that right now, especially if it's kind of a bigger contract, I would recommend online document signing. Currently, I have this one client and he insisted on mailing me the contract and I'm still waiting for it because I'm not at my house. so he had to mail it somewhere a little bit different like i am visiting family right now and kind of staying here for a little while so um, it's kind of slowed things down to start but the online document processors i believe i use eversign i think i get five documents for free um that i can i can have remotely signed and um it's actually considered uh, my friend who does like it stuff says it's actually considered more secure and more legally binding than something that's physically signed because when you sign uh, a document, it actually records the IP address of where you're at. So if, if someone, if your client said, Oh yeah, I never signed that and the IP address matches their computer, like it's not really going to stand up in court very well. So um, I'm not saying do this to not get sued. I'm saying that, you know, um, it's just kind of a nice thing to keep things moving forward in this weird time. And, um, and like I said, you get, what's nice about it is for example, so this client, there's another guy who had to sign the contract too. So there's three of us. So if I would have online signed this document, the client would have signed it. It would have automatically sent it to the second guy. And then it would have sent to me. And after I signed it, it would send a signed copy to all of us. So, um, just kind of consider that. Um, and like I said, if you really, if you don't use online bookkeeping and you, you know, you can also just use a payment. My whole mantra is like, I think payment forms are like, can totally solve a lot of problems. So basically I just have an open-ended form on my website that just takes an open-ended payment. Like people can type in how much they want to pay me. They can reference an invoice number if they want and they can press send and it automatically uh, gets sent into my bank account. So um, I'm not trying, you know, so if you, like I said, payment forms can, uh, they're kind of a, a, a workhorse that we don't hear a lot about, but they, I think, do a lot. So um, something you might be thinking at this point is, wait a minute, Nicole, you haven't talked about like Amazon or eBay or anything like that. Like, what about that? Um, there are these, you know, kind of third party systems that allow you to have a presence on them. So eBay.com slash whatever your store name is, or, you know, and then there are certain kinds of websites that sell certain kinds of products. I was trying to think of something really weird. And I was like, oh, I wonder if there's a website that just sells wedding stuff. Yeah, near, nearly newlywed.com apparently. So there's literally like an online shop that people have set up for everything apparently. Um, and obviously 
if I was selling like my wedding dress, I could go on nearly newlywed.com and list my wedding dress and understand that most people going to that website are looking for wedding stuff, you know? So part of what nearly newlywed, I'm, I'm just gonna call them NN. Part of what NN is doing is that they're sending traffic to the website. They're, you know, uh, kind of marketing it and stuff like that for you. But obviously, um, you know, they're taking their cut. Again, like I said, we can't just expect people to do work for free, right? Ourselves included. Um, but the pros are obviously that it's very easy to set up something like that. You make an account and that there's already people going to that website. And the cons are, of course, that the wedding dress I'm trying to sell is next to wedding dresses that other people are trying to sell. Um, and that if someone purchases typically from like a third party website, you don't necessarily see their contact information or otherwise get a chance to collect their, their data. Um, so like, for example, if someone buys from me on eBay, I can message them in the eBay platform. I can ask them for their email address, but like, I don't see their email address. Um, so, you know, we can, you know, it's harder to reach back out to that person. And we all know being in business that obviously, um, getting someone to buy something from you again, a repeat customer is a lot less expensive than a new customer. So, you know, the good with the bad folks always. Right. Um, and obviously having it on your own domain, you have a lot more kind of control over it. You're definitely getting their email address because obviously you have to email them a receipt. Um, but obviously you've got to spend time sending people to your new website, you know, and it takes more work to set it up because someone hasn't like made a bunch of design choices and other things for you. So, um, you know, and I talked a little bit about the nickel and diming I find of, of these, you know, third party services when you want something specific. But honestly, if you're just starting off, you're probably not a giant control freak like me who needs very specific things. Um, if you are, you know, great. But there might be, if something can solve your problem for $5 a month, right? You're just like, just do it. But it's when you have multiple things you need that all cost $5 a month, that's when it starts getting annoying. So again, like I said, I recommend most people start with a DIY, like pre-setup situation. And I also recommend you don't, it may seem like, like, oh, eBay is so 1990s. People still buy stuff on eBay. You know, and I told the story yesterday, my family has a, had a hardware store. My mom um, sold it a couple of years ago. It was in the family for three generations. And um, one of their employees was in charge of their eBay store. And basically it paid, it paid his salary. You know, it was uh, totally a worthwhile thing for them to have done. So don't think that just because it looks like eBay doesn't mean anyone's people aren't spending money. I've seen beautiful websites where no one's buying anything. And I've seen the ugliest websites where people are buying tons. So we can't make assumptions based on how something looks. Um, so now what we want to do obviously is consider what's nice to have versus what's essential. Now I haven't put in the ability to sell products, right? <laughs> but you know, that's kind of thing we need. There's some additional kind of things that I put in here that I thought of that like you might want. Um, so some of these things obviously are going to be uh, a bigger deal to some kinds of customers than, or some kinds of businesses than other kinds of businesses. Um, obviously, you know, in terms of like recommendations I would have, um, and I said this yesterday, abandoned cart emails. You notice now that every online shopping cart that you go on, the first thing you do when you start checking out is you put in your email address. Why is that? Well, first of all, you're on their marketing list. And second of all, uh, now they can send you a, oh, you forgot something in your cart email, which convert really well, like over 60%. Like, so if you get those emails and like me, ignore them, understand that some people don't, and that's why they send them. So I would recommend abandoned cart emails. If you are setting up an online shopping cart, that seems like kind of free money. Um, and I would recommend, you know, Obviously having the ability to um, cross sell, upsell or add ons, that's typically in there, but sometimes people list it out as separate. But if someone's looking at like, you know, your regular coffee mug and you have some deluxe coffee mug and that costs an extra $3 that you can show to them and they're gonna buy, great. Um, and then the final thing that I would definitely like recommend, and the rest of them are kind of like personal preference. Um, you probably wanna be able to take a coupon code um, because if you're doing marketing, like if you're running a campaign on Facebook or through your email list and you're like, oh, type in FB20 and get 20% off, you know, from seeing this Facebook ad, you'll be able to tell how many people obviously put in the coupon code and you'll know kind of how effective your campaign was. Um, and, uh, and also I would recommend taking multiple kinds of payments. I mentioned this yesterday, but 
um, you know, yes, take a credit card payment, but maybe you also take PayPal, you know, or maybe you also um, take ACH, you know, you take bank payments or something like that. Because what you don't want is for people to see something and be like, oh, I don't have PayPal. I can't, I can't pay for that. I don't have PayPal. Or, and I get it. Like you can pay with a credit card with PayPal, but a lot of people don't know that. And a lot of very smart people don't know that. Um, so what you want to do is at least give a couple different ways that they can give you money. Um, and by give you money, I mean pay you money for a valuable product or services that you have. Um, so yeah, we talked a little bit about obviously online point of sale systems yesterday, but um, basically if you are, have an existing point of sale system, you already have obviously processing built in. But if you're someone like me who like doesn't have a store and I just needed a way to take money online, you have these online only payment processors that are really great. Um, they don't have a setup or a monthly fee and they just charge you a percentage of transaction. And this 2.9% plus 30 cents of transaction is really typical um, it, across, the, um, across the internet. So it's gonna be somewhere around there for you to accept credit card payments. So let's talk a little bit about some options here, shall we? I don't know, there was a, there was a woman yesterday who asked about selling on Facebook. And um, I have some information about that. I didn't have it in the handout when I sent it to Danny. Don't mind going over a little bit at the end if we have some time, but let's just say Facebook is a little bit of a can of worms because there's a few different ways you can kind of sell on it um, that I know of. And, you know, I'm not sure how much of a Facebook class people want. So I just, just want to let that person know if you're here and you want me to go over it, we can at the end. And feel free to pop it in chat. Um, if you're not here, I might just skip it. How's everyone doing? I get I've been talking a while. I know, it's, it feels like a little bit like drinking from the fire hose, but I hope that the handout can be helpful to reference. So I've made up a business. Don't worry, I don't run this business, thankfully, because I would not be very good at it. So I'm pretending that I have an alpaca farm, because um, why wouldn't I? And that I, by the way, I don't know if it's called skeins, I meant to look that up before this, but um, I sell alpaca wool and I have it in three colors. Um, so there we go. Okay, skein, I spelled it wrong. I was like, I knew that seemed wrong. I think it's, yeah, there we go. Thank you for the person who popped that in chat. So let's just say that for simplicity's sake, this is my product line. You know, I've got just a couple of variables, right? So I don't necessarily need to even list, you know, I could just say, oh, six ounces uh, of whatever. Okay, what color do you want? And how many of them do you want? or I could list them as three different products. Here is black alpaca wool, here is light brown alpaca wool, and here's a black brown blend. Just kind of depends on kind of how, what I want it to look like. So a couple of things that I've made up here to be totally fake, um, that I have friends and family in Canada, which actually that's true. Um, and so let's say that I want them to be able to buy in my online store. So I want them to be, I want to be able to ship there. Obviously I have something a little squishy, so I can put it in an envelope, which is obviously going to be cheaper than a box. So um, yeah, okay. Um, I wanna be able to offer digital gift cards for the online store. So if somebody like wants to buy a gift card, I want it to automatically be able to create a little coupon code so that if they buy it immediately and then wanna go spend it, that they can. Um, I will say I did this on my, on my co-working space website and I'm kicking myself for not doing it sooner. I have a little pop-up that comes up after you've been on my website for about two to three minutes and it says, Oh, hey, like, do you want to keep in touch? Like, put in your email address and you'll be added to our marketing newsletter. I have increased my email list by like 150 people this year because I just added that. It's so stupid. But I don't immediately ask people when they get to the site because they might not be interested, you know? So I let them look around a little bit and then I have it pop up. Um, I want to be able to do Facebook advertising. And if you don't know what a remarketing pixel is, I don't necessarily want to necessarily get into it, but let's just say that you can take out ads to people who've been to your website before remarketing pixel. Fantastic. And I want to use the Stripe payment processing because I like them and they have nice Irish accents when I call their support, but, but truthfully they integrate with tons of stuff. All right. So let's look at what some of our options would be. So I really have, I kind of have one product, but it has three kind of variables, right? Which is color. And obviously I can, someone can order multiple ones. And maybe I want to have like, if someone buys five or more, maybe, maybe the pricing is different maybe, you know, I hadn't thought through that part, but you, so you see how I'm sort of organizing myself, right? And it's, you're going to do the same thing with your business. 
So first of all, let's think a little bit about shipping to our friends in Canada. Now I've, I've kind of pulled this stuff up so that you don't have to like watch me do it. Um, so, oops, hold on. There it is. There's my calculator. I love the internet. It has things like, here's your online, compare your online shipping rates on a single page, onlineshippingcalculator.com. Love the internet. Okay. So in my fake example, I have my, you know, from and then to, and I have measured my products and I have my weight. I don't know, by the way, if it's five, I don't know if these are the right dimensions of a six ounce skein, but as you see here, I can sort it either like a king and put the most expensive one on top, or I can sort it like a normal person and put the less expensive. And as you see here, the first class package is going to be $12.25 um, at the retail rate. Now, if you go, some of you have bulk processing, good for you. Probably most of us don't though. So, um, all right. So that, and it's going to take 15 days. Okay. Now let's just say like, oof, like 15 days. That's a lot. Um, I don't want my customers to wait that long. So we have UPS four days, but as you see, I'm going to pay a little bit more money for it. Um, so, you know, you see here that where you're going to kind of make a decision and you're going to build that into your shipping costs or into your pricing. Now let's talk a little bit about how, like, okay, now that I know what I'm charging, like how would I build that in? So I have my online shopping, my, my shopping cart here. And one of the things I have is I can set shipping parameters. By the way, this would go for any sort of e-commerce site will allow you to do this. Um, so what I can do is currently on this site, I have US, I have flat rate shipping. Um, so I, this is, you know, so what I can do is I can add a shipping class and I can say, okay, like for, you know, um, hold on. Yeah. Okay. So I want to add a shipping class. Uh, okay. Add a shipping class. There we go. Okay. So now I want to add shipping on, oh, leave. Okay. Maybe I meant shipping zones, but as you see here, oh, come on. Sorry, my internet here is a little slower than I'm used to using. I haven't felt like updating my database lately. Okay, so I'm just going to add a shipping zone, and I'm I meant to add a shipping zone. Sorry, I've just been in and out of different software all the time. So what I can do is I can say, all right, so I want to go Canada. Oh, come on, North America. Okay, what is Canada like separate from North America? Okay. All right, sorry, I don't feel like thinking through this right now because we're on a call, but point being is I can set it in my software, like how I want to ship and how I want it to work, and I can build in the price in there um, for my whole cart. But if I, let's just say I have a product that is kind of a little bit heavier or something, I can also do things at the product level um, for shipping. So I'm just going to pretend I'm adding a new product here. So let's say that I had like, obviously my five skeins are going to, you know, weigh a lot, but maybe I don't want to charge them the full amount for the shipping. Um, what you'll notice is that I can set at the product level and look, oh, look, I can make this, I can have a downloadable product too, ready to go. But, you know, underneath the shipping, I can, I can pick a shipping class and I can set it within the product as well. So I can have different products that are shipped at different rates, if that makes sense. By the way, I can't see any of you because I'm just talking and looking at my notes. So if you think this is terrible, please pop in the chat or ask questions. Okay. Um, so the main thing a lot of people have to figure out is shipping. Now there's this psychological thing where people just do not want to pay for shipping. Um, and I have kind of, most of the time I would say build in your price, build shipping into your pricing. Um, so that when people, cause I really hate it when I like put something in the cart and then I get to the end and it's like, okay, this $20 thing is going to cost you $50 to ship it. And you're like, oh, you know, this psychologically that's like, even though I probably wouldn't mind paying $25 for the product if it had free shipping, if that makes any sense at all, it's just a weird psychological thing. But something that my friend Jen has done is she sells coffee and she puts it in a flat rate box and you can fit three bags in the box. But regardless, she's paying a certain amount to whether she's shipping one or three. So she has in her thing, the shipping broken out so that as you like put things in, the shipping doesn't change. So it kind of shows you like, oh, okay. So I could put another thing in there and oh, it's the same amount of shipping. Oh, I might as well get three bags instead of two if I'm paying the same amount in shipping. So it kind of depends on the psychology of your customer here. All right. So I know the things I want. 
I figured out my shipping. I ideally know what my things are being taxed at. Um, the, Melissa, who is in this call, is an accountant, so she would be a much better question to ask about things like that. But if you know what your numbers are, it's easier to build them in. So let's take a look at Square, Squarespace, different company, and Shopify and Etsy, just as our kind of sample things. All right, so every piece of software has this on their site. It's called a feature table. And the idea is if you scroll down, it gives you um, kind of a way to theoretically compare. Actually, yes, see more features. Oh, come on. No, I wanted to see a, fe a whole like list of them. Okay, let's take a look here. So we have unlimited products for pickup and delivery. Um, oh, come on. Okay, this was a bad one to start with. All right, let's try one second. All right, so let's look at Squarespace. Oh, come on. No, I don't need this whole thing. Just close. Uh, one second. There we go. Okay. There we go. This is more what I was looking for. Now, take a look a little bit at the left here. Do you see? Oh, my God. On the left of that screen, there's this thing that says build annually which is kind of tricky. Um, and a lot of software does this. So if you, so pay annually, and it's showing the price per month. So you're paying annually, and you're paying $12 a month, but you're, if you go through this right now, you're paying $12 times 12. If you shift it over toward monthly, the costs get a little bit more expensive, um, but not much more. So what I would recommend, especially if you're sort of like thinking about it, first of all, sign up for the two week free trial of whatever you're considering. But second of all, make sure you're toggled over to monthly. Otherwise you're gonna to get to the cart and be like, why does this cost $200? Okay, so let's take a look. Oh, free custom domain that comes with, um, I'm just looking to see what features I need. Um, so wait, let's see, what did I want? Coupons? Oh, coupons is not. Fine. I thought it would let me search things. Okay. Squarespace extensions, web analytics. Okay, gift cards. Okay. So I want to sell gift cards. Now, look here. This first one doesn't allow me to sell gift cards, but the second one has a little asterisk next to it. And when I hover over it, it says available September 1st. Um, oh, available until September 1st. I see. So they're offering it now because of the whole COVID situation, but they're not offering it necessarily forever. Um, so, oops. Yeah, okay, I'm on the gift card thing. So, okay, I know I need gift cards. Okay, oh, abandoned cart emails. Oh, look at that. So you see here, like, okay, suddenly it makes sense, the difference between paying $16, $26, or $46, right? Kind of what you're getting. Um, and what, so that's why it's really important for you to understand like what you, what is your like thing that you want and need versus like what they're offering. Um, so it looks like I'm going to need the $46 one based on, on what I want. Let's, uh, I was looking for remarketing, but it's not on here either. Oh, sell subscriptions. So yeah, so we see kind of like. Oh, products on Instagram. Okay, if I want to be able to tag my, my product catalog on Instagram, I need to have a, one of these two levels. So basically, once you look at one features chart, they're all pretty similar. Let's look at Shopify's. All right. So, oh, free for 90 days. That's new. Either that or I'm not very observant. Okay, so let's look at basic Shopify versus, okay, they all seem to offer unlimited products. Um, and then we have, let's see here, I'm looking for some more things. Discount codes, okay, all of them offer that, great. Abandoned cart, they all offer that. Gift cards, okay, the upper two offer that, okay. Okay, oh, it looks like there's some specialized potential USPS pricing for the upper two. So I might wanna look at that. Okay, we have, Oh, online transaction fees. Okay, it gets to be a little bit lower if I go with the high. So I, I technically have to go with the higher two, right? And this is between $79 and $299. Again, so what we want to do is we want to like make sure that we're comparing the $46 to the $79 by actually comparing what they have. So, um, and now let's look at Etsy. So Etsy has a few different fees. And what's really funny is when you look up Etsy fees, the easiest way to see them is on other people's blogs. 
not on the Etsy website. But on the Etsy website, you see that you have a 20 cent listing fee. Now the 20 cent listing fee I think is good for four months and you can have it set to auto renew. That's what it's mentioning, this auto renewal thing. Um, and I believe that this would include, so like my, my skein would be like one and I, people could pick a color. So I would, that would kind of count as one item because really it's like one item that has a few variations in there. So, um, and then, oh, and then there's some transaction fees. Okay. So it's going to charge, you will be charged a transaction fee of 5% of the price you display on each listing. Um, so good to know, right? So we're charging 20 cents to list and 5%. So if you know your numbers or what you think your numbers might be, I get that we're all kind of figuring this out in this weird situation, but if you know kind of what your sales are and kind of what your pricing is, you could do the math for these different services and kind of see, and maybe you say, you know what, I do want to have my own website, but I also want to try Etsy and see if it's a thing. Sure. Um, but I think it's hard because um, I wouldn't just sell necessarily on just Etsy or just eBay myself, because if someone doesn't have an eBay account or doesn't have an Etsy account, they might not want to sign up for a whole account just to buy something from you or feel like they have to. Um, so I don't know, again, I'm not sure how useful this is, but essentially what you want to do is just get real comfortable thinking about the features table and just not be intimidated by it. Just read it. Um, it's the fine print. I want to go very briefly over Facebook because um, the person who requested it yesterday is here and I want to kind of go over what that is. So there are a few different ways that you can sell things on Facebook. Number one is Facebook marketplace. So now this is interesting. Now I had a um, client who wanted me to list something on marketplace. So I have a mark, I think I took them down, but I had a marketplace listing for an online product and I did get a lot of, people saying, is this available? Is this available? And I had this thing that I just copied and pasted and be like, yeah, you can buy it online here. Um, and I think we made one sale from it, but the amount of time I spent messaging with people who were sort of like, if someone's in Facebook marketplace, it's kind of one of those things where someone is kind of open to maybe buying something, but they're not necessarily looking to, th to buy something. They're more of like casual. Um, they're, it, this is more of a, reactive versus a proactive approach, I think, but you can, you can sell stuff on marketplace and it can, you know, it will have a theoretical geographic listing associated, um, which is why it's showing me a bunch of apartments. I was looking for an apartment uh, last month. And so it's showing me a bunch of apartments in uh, Potsdam or near Potsdam, New York, but yours will obviously look different. So there is like a, a local component to it. So if you sell something local, this might be a good place for you to be. Second place you can sell on Facebook is, um, um, this is, um, if you, there's this thing called Facebook business manager and there's a bunch of stuff back here, but the main thing that you probably care about is there's these things called product catalogs. So if you've ever seen someone tag something on Instagram, that's how that works. They set up Facebook business manager and I get it. It's called Facebook business manager, not Instagram business manager, but they're owned by the same company. And what you can do is you can upload your products into here and you can link them through Facebook ads or by, by making them tappable on Instagram. Um, so if you've ever wondered how people do that, that's what, what it is. Um, so, okay. There's just Danny popping some information in the chat about, uh, ongoing support. And the third way that a lot of people don't know that you can sell on Facebook is you can sell through Facebook messenger. Um, there's these things called messenger bots. Um, and you can basically, it's kind of like you can send individuals. Like, so if I wanted to send Danny, like, like, Oh, here's 10 bucks, Danny. Thanks for lunch the other day. I can do that through Facebook messenger, but I can also do things as a business through Facebook messenger. Um, and basically it tells us exactly kind of how, Oh, look, we need to connect with an online processor and then we can upload our products and make, put a little button where they can buy. And then we hook it in. And, um, anyway, so those are the three different ways I know to sell on Facebook other than obviously posting that stuff to your business Facebook page or something like that. But, um, so that's why when someone said, Oh, sell on Facebook, I was like, Oh, I hope this answers their question. Um, <laughs> cause there's, you know, there's a few different, uh, <laughs> there's a few different ways to do that. So all this to say is, um, 
no matter what you pick, it's not going to be terrible. I'm just going to say that because all of these online processors, you know, they have, or all of these online shopping carts have to be compliant with, um, you know, federal and regulations and things like that. So it's not going to let you kind of fraudulently take credit card payments or something like that. So please don't worry that you're going to like make the wrong decision. You're going to make something, a decision to kind of get you through. And a couple of these are kind of left over from yesterday. I did, you know, obviously, you know, you want to just understand what all your costs are. How much is your packaging? How much is your, you know, yeah, you're going to pay someone to put something in a box. I had a client once who said, um, <laughs> you know, I had a client who said, um, oh, you know, she basically wanted it to jump in the box for her. Honestly, I wish I could make that happen. But if you don't want to handle preparing orders, there are things called fulfillment services. The most well-known one being Amazon Fulfillment. Um, and you can use Amazon Fulfillment services without using Amazon, I believe. You can use them with your shopping cart. Um, and it seems to charge fees that are either a flat fee per month or a price per unit. And I'm not quite sure exactly like what goes into that, but just know that if for some reason you don't want to handle it, there are you can pay someone to, to handle it. Um, and I talked about some of this stuff yesterday, but basically, you know, thinking of things um, for your customers, thinking of a way for them to maybe pay over time if you have a more expensive product. Like I said, making sure you read the fine print. Oh, annual pricing, nice and tricky. Um, and, you know, having, you know, multiple ways to take payments. I will say for most people, the US Postal Service is probably gonna be your cheapest fulfillment option. Uh, but by all means, use an online calculator and check out what some of your products are. I get that not all of you are only selling a product that has a set amount of dimensions and a set amount of weight. You probably have different products that do that. So, but, you know, run it through a couple of your products. Obviously do it for the products that are like either the weirdest shape or the most heavy <laughs> so that you can, because you want to go, you want to kind of overestimate this rather than underestimate in any case. Um, and then a couple of things that if you do uh, decide to set something up on your own website, if you have an existing web host and you have, say, WordPress running on your website, you say, oh, you know what, maybe I'll add WooCommerce and add a shopping cart to my existing WordPress website. A lot of web hosts have what's called Let's Encrypt. And basically what that is, is if you look in the upper corner of my screen, you see this little padlock. Um, I'm going to click on it, the site information. It has what's called a secure certificate. If you take payments or anything sensitive on your website, at least on the payment screen, that site has to load in HTTPS. The other thing though, I would just say, make your whole site load that way. So first of all, you don't have to remember to do it on one page. And second of all, it actually improves like your search engine stuff and whatever. Um, I just added it. I put it on one of my websites. I just made the whole thing load and I ran it through a Google page checker and I jumped like 23 SEO points just for turning on HTTPS. I don't know why I didn't do that before, but a lot of times, um, and even if you worked with me before, I used to charge you to do this because I had to buy the secure certificate, which is like 15 bucks. And I had to install it for you about once, a, you know, once a year. Now this let's encrypt thing has free secure certificates and they renew themselves automatically. So if you have a web host, ask them if they have let's encrypt, you know, so that you can put a secure certificate on your website. Um, a, a lot of them do. And if your host doesn't, there's, there's lots of them that, that have it. And if you go to letsencrypt.org, it'll tell you web hosts that they work with. But also just ask if you have, especially if you have a local web host, just ask them to provide this. Um, I'm sure that a lot of them would, would like to, to do that for you. So anyway, that is pretty much what I got. Um, I believe Danny had to jump onto another call. So do any of you have any questions or things that you want to talk about? I'll just give you a couple minutes to pop them in the chat. Um, if you, if you have them, I get that this is a lot of information again, you know, um, I hope that at the end of this, you feel like you can pick something and, and feel like you can, can go forward with it. Um, yes. So someone asked about office hours. So if you look in the chat, there is, um, Danny posted something. It's if you go to adirondack.org slash e-commerce support, the link is, um, is in the chat. It's e dash commerce support. Um, there is, I think you can apply for like office hours and I think they're giving away half hour of me like looking at your stuff and kind of telling you what I would do. Um, so feel free to apply for that. Um, you know, and, and like I said, you know, even if I'm not, if you have a local web developer you're working with, a lot of us are hurting right now and a lot of us are helping our clients through this. So 
if even if you haven't heard from your web person, like reach out and kind of tell them that maybe you want this kind of support. And a lot of us are kind of doing this with our clients right now um, to help them get through because we want to help them as much as we can. Um, so, so yeah, like I said, am I, are we going to set up a whole cart in an hour? No, but I'm thinking that, I don't know, Squarespace is looking okay to me. The one thing I think with Squarespace that I'm a little limited on, not that I, not that my fake alpaca store needs this, but I don't think Squarespace does recurring payments. Um, but I would need to double check that, you know, the square online store thing I have to look into a bit more too. I didn't mean to gloss over square, by the way. Um, I was saying at the beginning of the call, I'm just really impressed with how they've stepped up. Um, as I believe that one of their, their CEO or their somebody high up is donating a bunch of money to the COVID effort, like 28% of his net worth. And, um, they really, they were one of the companies that stepped up very quickly a couple of weeks ago. And were like, listen, we're going to waive our fees on this, on this stuff. You know, if you're already a customer, you can add this stuff on already. So, um, I didn't mean to gloss over square at all. Um, so if you use square, you know, if you're, you've got the little thing that, you know, you got the farmer's market taking payments, um, look into that as well. And like, again, build annually, watch out for that. Um, but a lot of them will let you try out software. So take advantage of that. Like I said, when you have some bandwidth and be like, all right, we're going to test out for a couple of days. Um, I would encourage you to do the, uh, the free trial to get started, but it looks like there's at least one free square store option. I'm just not sure why it's free. Um, I know that says I'll start for free, but um, like you said, read the fine print. It'll get you out of some, uh, it'll get you out of some jams, but um. And if you do set up an online shopping cart, please do reach out to Danny. I think you all have her email at this point and send the link because I think Anka and other and the Shipley Center and Clarkson and other partners are going to be kind of aggregating resources together so that we can share what you're doing. So um, if you do set something like that up, please reach out to as many people, many of us as possible, and we'll try to boost the signal, so to speak, um, of what you're trying to do. So. All right, I don't see any questions in the chat, so I'm, I'm hoping that not everybody is in a totally bored coma here. It's kind of a slightly technical topic to cover, but um, a lot of it is just kind of getting comfortable with, like I said, just you know, kind of making a really educated choice and going with it and um, making sure that you know what you want versus what you need, because obviously the more stuff you want, the more stuff you're probably gonna pay for. Um, and that's okay if you need it, obviously, but if you don't, uh, and there's something that's kind of nice. If there's something that's kind of nice and you're looking at two softwares and one of them offers it, it kind of might, uh, it might make the choice for you. So anyway, thanks so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. And uh, again, my name is Nicole Ouellette and um, I'm probably related to every Ouellette you have ever met because my grandfather had 26 brothers and sisters. So, um, but please feel free to reach out to Anka. Like I said, we're doing office hours with them. Um, and also I have, um, a consultancy too, and you're welcome to sort of reach out to me through them as well. So thanks for your time. Have a great day and hope that you guys are going to make some money online soon and that we can all help support each other. Um, there's a lot of great local buy local energy. Let's take advantage of it. Um, you guys deserve it. So have a good rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon.